Today's talk is on overcoming fear. Today, people have many fears. Fear of the dark, fear of dying, fear of living, fear of what others might think of us or might say about us, fear of relationship security, fear of emotional security, fear of the lack of financial security, and if we do have it, fear of losing it. Today we have so many fears. With all our years of life experience, why have we not solved or found the answer to all these fears? Society today has spent so much time, effort, brain power and money on solving the problems of the world. Why has nobody solved the problem of the attachment to fear? Why with all this brain power, investigating, and in many cases solving the riddles of space and time, why has all this brain power not been applied to solving the erroneous sense of fear that has endured since the beginning of human time? Why do we not delve into this, quest, this question in the same way and with the same sense of purpose that we have when we are hungry, or when we are ambitious, or when we want more income? In these, we work at them diligently. So why have we not gone into this question of fear with the same enthusiasm. Doctors, psychologists, therapists, they all say that they have explained it. But all they give us is verbal action to their perceived cause of fear. The fact is that they are quite possibly in a similar state of fear as the rest of us. So after decades of our lives and after centuries of society, why has this question of fear never been solved? Is it possible to bring the fear in our lives to an end? If we apply our emotions and our brain power and our deep feelings, instead of always trying to find somewhere to emotionally run away from it and instead look to rationalise it or to try to understand it or try to understand why we allow ourselves to become incapable of comprehending and understanding the trueness of fear, So what is fear? When we experience fear, we know of its existence, of its existence within us. We know of the nature of it, how it can pound within us, how, it can, how we can feel physically diminutive, how we can feel physically small, how our rationality can become conscrewed and in severe cases some people become paralyzed like a ruin the headlights. It can affect our daily routine such as sleeping and eating. It can cause anxiety and depression. It can also cause suspicion within us as we try to grasp onto something solid and stable in our lives in an attempt to stave off this fear as we feel it approaching. In the removal of this fear, we either can find the root cause of the fear itself or we can try to put out the fires of a thousand different fears 
as they arise from now until the end of our days. Which would you prefer to spend your life? Spend your lives fighting emotional, fearful fires? Or would you prefer to get to the root cause of fear itself? Fighting the flames of fear endlessly can be exhausting. So let us look at the cause of fear. We know the way fear expresses itself in our lives. So if, if we find the root cause of fear, these expressions of fear will cease to exist. So what is the cause? What is the causation of fear? If someone asks you the cause of fear, can you explain it? Can you explain that yourself? The explanation is not the fear or the cause of fear. If we paint a beautiful picture of the Buddha, the picture is not the Buddha, as the word fear is not the fear. But the word fear can bring a sensation of fear. We do not deal with the description of fear or the word of fear, rather we deal with, deal with the fear itself. You need to discover the truth about fear. Your truth, not somebody else's truth. You can only experience your own truth of fear and not somebody else's truth of fear. Whilst everybody's truth of fear is their own, what is the base cause of the fear that pervades each and every one of us? What is the cause of it? It is thought or thinking. Today I am alive, but thought tells me that life is fragile. There is sickness, disease, accidents. I might be dead by this time tomorrow, or my business might fail. I feel financially comfortable today, but the world economy may fall apart. My personal relationships is strong, but things go wrong. This is the sort of thing that is going on in the background of your mind. Thinking of loss. Thinking is one of the factors of fear. The fear of desperate loneliness can frighten us. Fear can cause attachments, holding on to something or someone, even if that something or someone is an illusion, not real, and even without meaning. We grab and hold on to others and phenomena in life because we have the fear but if we let go of them, we will be utterly lonely. And in this loneliness is the fear of feeling empty and of utter despair. The word fear is not fear. The word despair is not despair. They are just words. We need to look at fear and despair with the, without the use of these words. Loneliness, for example, arises when we constantly practice self-centeredness. The activity of self-centeredness produces aloneness. 
it reduces the abundance of life in the person who I believe is me. And when one realizes this, it comes as loneliness. And when it is realized, then great change can begin to take place. In fear, thought is one of the cases of fear. We think about death, our fear of our own mortality arises. So time also is a factor of fear. Fear of what the future may bring. Fear of what might occur due to something that I might have done. Fear of what others might think or say about me at some time in the future. Therefore, time and thought are the basic causes of fear. In the act of our daily lives, time and thought are obviously required. Thought is necessary to do our jobs, and so is time at that level. If thought and time are necessary at that level, is time and thought necessary at the psychological level, in the world of the self? In the world of the psyche, or in the world of the jewel in the lotus? If so, then you will live in a world of perpetual fear. Understanding that thought and time is the basis of fear and awareness that thought and time are necessary at the physical level in the world of the true self they are not really required. So vigilance is required to ensure that thought and time do not enter into this realm of the mind self. But this requires attention and awareness. Our mind that has been actualizing fear for decades can differentiate where it is necessary and when it is not. So it does not enter into the process of living. As with everything in the Zen, this is a practice, a training of the mind, it is a discipline of the mind self. The word discipline comes from the word disciple. A disciple is one who learns, one who learns all the time. As the great orator once said, Krishnamurti, our difficulty is that we listen to many things. We know a great deal. We have searched and we have read. We have sought the advice of others. We have wandered the earth to find the answers, to find out what it's all about. But we never ask ourselves we never demand of ourselves serious and difficult questions. We always ask ourselves superficial questions. So we make our lives very superficial. But if you ask questions of yourself that demand answers, answers that exercise your brain, and your feelings and your whole attention is given to that question. Then you did begin to discover yourself and have freedom from fear. And then you will truly be free. Thank you for listening.